Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another exciting gameplay during FIDE Chess Olympia 2020. Again, we are in the top division Pool B, but this time I would like to show you the game from the match between Ukraine and Slovakia. So uh, in the Ukraine team, the top player is Anton Korobov uh, with his incredible ranking in the rapid time control. 2794 and yes he is number five in the world very very strong player uh, Anton is 35 years old and he's gonna play as white and his opponent Lubomir Ftachnik from Slovakia also very strong grandmaster he was the European uh, junior champion uh, but it happened over 40 years ago yes Lubomir Ftachnik now is 63 years old however he is still very strong um, his rapid ranking is 2499 and he still is active for example in Bundesliga so um, he is still you know very very strong grandmaster uh, in this game he's gonna play as black so without further ado let's see what happened on the board Anton open with d4 we have knight f6 c4 g6 knight c3 and now black has a choice to go uh, for the king's indian defense for example bishop g7 d6 even c5 also can be played King's Indian defense, very, very popular, a uh, very interesting opening. However, we have immediately played d5, so Greenfield defense. C takes on d5, knight takes on d5, and now e4, kicking the knight. And to not lose the tempo, then of course, knight takes on c3, uh, b takes on c3, and now bishop g7. All of that, of course, is the theory, main line of the Greenfield defense. We have bishop c4, now c5. Uh, putting the pressure on the center and now knight e2 helping to defend d4 pawn knight c6 still putting even more pressure and now bishop e3 uh, we have castle by black castle by white and now what black can play the main idea here is bishop g4 just to force white actually to play f3 which looks like very strong move uh, you know supporting e4 however the main idea for white of course is push d5 so if d5 is pushed then white can create actually the very dangerous past pawn uh, and this is the main idea for black black would love to go for the queen side uh, past pawn and you know play against this one pawn so one of the ideas is uh, you know to exchange the pawns in the future uh, so bishop g4 can be played then the bishop can retreat um, even to e6 or on to d7 uh, queen c7 is the another idea and also knight a5 so these are well known ideas in this opening however here we have bishop d7 and now rook b1 attacking the, the pawn on b7 this is another idea c takes on d4 c takes on d4 and now Ftachnik doesn't protect b7 he played rook to c8 and it is that a blunder i don't think so uh just reminder you know two very strong grandmasters play here uh rook b7 of course can be met with knight a5 attacking the the rook attacking the bishop twice so uh black gonna win the exchange and probably have the very very comfortable game uh, this is why bishop d3 this is still part of the theory however we don't have many games in the in the database we have knight a5 now defending the b7 and also uh, black of course anticipate the move d5 so it cannot come with tempo and attack the, the knight so d5 was played by korobov and now we have b6 bishop a6 attacking the rook on c8 and now rook c7 bishop f4 improving the position of the bishop uh, still harassing the rook on c7 so we have rook c5 and now the rook is very safe there uh, so queen d3 by Korobov uh, and now bishop c8 saying I want to exchange um, the bishops we have rook f to c1 and now the position is quite tricky we have one game in the database uh, and now interesting thing that um, the players follow uh, the moves from that game uh, however it's not the strongest continuation for black 
because in this position actually what black should play is something like bishop a6 and after rook a6 uh, exchange the rooks and then try to undermine this center and try to do something with these pawns uh, and the game would be very very sharp and very interesting uh, but both sides of course would have um, you know some chances but here we have knight b7 so again we have the same continuation like it was uh, the, the one game in the database uh, and now it's not really great for black because bishop b7 uh, and now of course bishop b7 cannot be taken that would be a disaster because uh, white would win the piece and the game so rook c1 first this is forced rook c1 and only now bishop b7 uh, the problem is now white gonna get very easily on the seventh rank so very active position of Korobov uh, and now the bishop cannot be defended doesn't have the good squares to go if the queen for example go to a8 uh, then the pawn on e7 is hanging and this would be the passed pawn protected passed pawn very strong um, and that would be disaster so this is why we have bishop a8 and now rook a7 winning the pawn we have f5 now undermining this pawn chain uh, and here Korobov goes for very sharp d6 uh, and in the game I just mentioned we have e takes on d6 and black resign uh, so white won that game uh, that's what we have in the database however uh, in our game we have e takes on d6 by Vtachnik and he didn't resign so we have continuation you know how to win that game what would you play as white it's not difficult to actually uh, find bishop d6 uh, we have rook e8 and now the rook is in a very very active position x-raying the pawn x-raying uh, also the knight so there are some mating ideas on the first rank uh, so white have to be very careful uh, but white knows how to actually uh, prevent that and put the rook to the passive square so we have queen b3 with check king h8 and now queen f7 threatening the checkmate on g7 the only move defending is of course rook g8 if queen f6 then the rook is hanging so it's not possible so now the rook has to be moved to the passive position g8 uh, but at least the king is in the very very safe position now how to get to that king uh, that's the question uh, we have e5 solidifying the position in the center and also this pawn can be very very dangerous past pawn now how to continue as black uh, if black for example try to exchange the queens what white can do is just you know move to b3 uh, put the pressure on this pawn create another passed pawn win the game uh, an interesting thing of course this pawn cannot be taken uh, because it's guarded by the tactic rook e7 with the attack on the queen and double attack on the on the bishop so of course um, that would be winning also there is you know bishop to e5 and uh, and that just disaster you know winning even more material so this is why in this position Vtachnik actually went for queen g5 queen g5 immediately threatens the checkmate on g2 and also looking at c1 square that would be the the checkmate if the knight is ever moved for example and also the queen can move to d2 attack the the knight attack the the pawn and threaten the checkmate for example on e1 so very active position however uh, korobov has a very interesting continuation here so uh, try to pause the video take as much time as you can and find the winning continuation for white you have to find at least two good moves in this continuation so uh, pause the video enjoy the tactic while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so if you found something like knight g3 yes okay this is this is winning move that's enough to win um defensive move g3 is also winning you know preventing any any checkmates and uh, and so on however the best idea here is actually to sacrifice the queen so if you remember the thumbnail and the title of the video 
then of course that should be easy queen g8 king g8 rook a8 king f7 uh, and now you could go for something like rook a7 and pray for the for the king e6 uh, because if you have you know threefold repetition here and uh, that would be a draw if king e6 you can win because after rook g7 and and queen d2 you always have the option after rook e7 let's say king d5 knight g3 and this knight always can protect from the from the checkmate that should be winning and yes black has this move uh, queen a2 but it's not enough this pawn never gonna uh, reach b1 the promoting square because the bishop controls b4 and the rook from for example from b8 uh, gonna control b4 as well so it's not even possible as the bishop is defended and the rook gonna be defended over there as well so uh, not this move rook a7 uh, could be winning but only if you find another strong move the strongest move in the position which actually anton korobov found immediately knight f4 sacrificing the knight now the idea is of course if the knight is taken uh, we have e6 very simple tactic winning the winning the queen this would be of course very easy win for white so um, another option is queen g4 uh, trying to maybe checkmate on the first rank but it can be refuted very easily f3 maybe queen h4 trying again but now um, g3 and the queen has nowhere to go all the squares are actually covered except g5 and maybe h6 so uh, queen g5 but now e6 and this pawn gonna win the game and it cannot be stopped um, the king has only one one square and then after e7 um, the pawn gonna promote in the next move and of course is winning for white uh, so uh, Ftachnik try something else bishop f6 trying to you know create some some blockade but now uh, Anton Korobov played rook f8 and the king has only one legal move king g7 and after knight e6 forking the king and the queen uh, Lubomir Ftachnik resign so beautiful queen sacrificed by Anton Korobov uh, and I would like to show you the standings again Ukraine as you see gonna play in the playoffs but it's not gonna be easy because Ukraine gonna play against China so the winner gonna get to the to the quarterfinals uh, and yeah as always if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press and like uh, and if you don't want to miss another games from Fide Chess Olympia 2020 press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one